It's Christy Love's Side House. Hello. Yes, I'm going to name. This is Christy Love's. Um, and I'm going to be talking about creating OCs, aka original characters. So, my first, um, what's it called? My first, um, piece of advice is to base it off of someone you know. So, like, um, make a character, like, based off of you if you want to, or you can base it off of, like, your family, or, like, you know, like, cousins. Um, I made characters based off my cousins, um, when I created, like, this little art series that I, I was, I told them I was gonna do, um, and so, yeah, based it off, of, like, family or friends, or you can even do, like, animals that, that's, you know, like, something that you want, like, an animal you want, um, and here is another tip. So I say base it off of like friends or people you know. That way you can easily just like come up with characters just like that. And it doesn't have to look like them. You can make it look like whatever you want it to look like. So yeah. Um, my next piece of advice is to... Um, well, not what, what to do. Okay, so what it is is what do you want to be when you grow up or who do you want to be? So basically... Um, some of my examples are a superhero, unicorn, because unicorns are awesome, ghost, um, a vampire, a vet, um, a doctor, an actress, actor, I don't know, something like that. If you want to be that, then you can be that, just, you can create a character based off of what you want to be, who you want to be, and stuff like that, and that's an easy, quick way to develop a character. What do you like to do for me? I like to draw. <laughs> and so I can create a character that is a artist or something. I also like to write and stuff like that. And I could create an artist that's like, not an artist, but a, a character that is a professional writer. And like, I don't know, and likes to write books and stuff like that, but gets stumped. I don't know. Just like, this like create your characters based off of some of that stuff or like what you like to do or, or what you like or like what do you like like if you like animals like again like a, like again like I said it can be a, a vet your character can be a vet and so so if you like animals your character can be a vet and helps animals that you know are hurt or something or are sick and tries to help them um, but yeah, that, that's one. Um, what's the story of your character? So, I will have you know right, right here, this is one of my original characters, her name is Nita. Um, and the story, because she does have a story and I actually wrote it down and everything. And she, the story that I have created for her is that, ooh, my pen is starting to... No, don't lose ink on me now. Okay. <laughs> okay, and the story I have for her is actually a love story where she falls in love with a criminal. She's a bad girl. No. <laughs> um, but she falls in love with a criminal. And it's like basically like a love story of like their ups and downs and stuff like that and things that happen in her life. But she has like a really tragic backstory. Make the character the ability or abilities you wish you had. So, let's say that, um, um, what? Like, you want to be a good singer, so make your character a good singer. Simple as that. Make them a good singer. Maybe you want to be, um, a good artist. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just using that as an example. Maybe you want to be, like, a good artist, um, and so your character could be, like, an amazing artist, or like a really professional artist that people love, and stuff like that. And just base it off the abilities you wish you had. Like, if you want to play an instrument, then let this character be able to play an instrument that you wish you knew how to play, or like an instrument that you like, but you don't know how to play, or don't know anyone that can play it. Um, and that's always a good way to start, too. So, uh, another one. Let's take place somewhere you want to go. So, let's say you want to go to Hawaii, <laughs> have your character live in Hawaii, and have the story take place in Hawaii, and, like, and they can, like, live on, and, like, 
Honolulu or somewhere like that, and like, and stuff like that, just, just have them live somewhere you want to go, like, I can create a character who lives in California, she doesn't live in California, she lives in New Jersey, but, um, create a character that lives in California, because I've always wanted to go to, to Cali, it's one of my top places to go, this pen is not working, come on, pen, work, don't, you can't fail on me about when I'm making a video, okay, um, but my, my, my character name is like, she's from New Jersey, not California, I should have made her from California, okay, um, next piece of advice is, if there's a time period you want to go back to, then have your character live in that time period, um, and if there isn't a time period you want to go back to, or, like, you want to make a story based off of the future, or your character based off of things that might happen in the future, or, like, how people might look in the future, then do that. Make your character from the future. And I actually have a character that I have based off of the the future and stuff like that. I kind of came up with a story for her. And I think I'm going to get a different pen, so, so be our reader. Okay, so, like I was saying, so, character from... Somewhere back in time, or like someone from the future. So basically, Nita here is, um, um, the story, the first story, is actually going to be a series. Um, actually it is a series. And so the first story takes place in the 50s. 1950s, because I've always wanted to get back to the 50s. Because everything was cheap and stuff like that. And I like how the cars look and how the, the girls and the people dress and everything and... So, yeah, um, so I, I made my character from the 60s, simple as that, because, not 60s, I said 60s, I meant 50s, <laughs> I'm getting my, my stories and stuff confused, um, but yeah, and I, and the reason I think why I love the 50s and 1900s and 60s and 70s and stuff, I like it because of, like, the cars, the clothes, the music, 80s music, especially, um, and also, because of my love of the outsiders, I, I wanted to make her be able to live to that time period, but not from that time period. So, yeah. So, make them from a time period you want to go to, like her, she is from the 50s. And so, I, I look up stuff about the 50s and draw her in 50s inspired clothing, and I think that might move on to... Oh, no, that doesn't move on to my next... Okay, what's their personality? So, come up with, like, a like a personality for your character. Like, are they, like, extremely happy and bubbly and, like, really nice? Or are they, like, really mean? Or maybe they're, or maybe they're, like, sad and, like, I don't know. <laughs> maybe they're just sad and need someone to, like, help them through that. And, and are they mean? Like, that's, that's a great way to come up with, like, a mean antagonist for, for your main character. And stuff like that. She has an antagonist, by the way. Um, but I will give you some of things about her personality. So, Nita, um, she is actually very caring, surprisingly, for a girl who, who went out with a criminal. Um, she kind of has a bit of, like, depression in her. Because she has a very tragic backstory. Um, what's something else? Uh, she can be very mean at times. She can be very mean. Um, what's something else about her? Um, I don't know. She doesn't judge a book by its cover, that's for sure. She's like, I'm not going to be rude to this person until I actually get to know them or else they're mean to me. <laughs> that's kind of a bit like my personality, but, but yeah, so that's some of like her personality and stuff like that, and um, she definitely doesn't like to push people around. She's not a very, like, uh, selfish girl and everything. Um, but she can definitely be really mean sometimes when she wants to and she's, and she has, like, her feelings show very easily, like, you know, like, she's just, she has very big emotions and stuff like that. Like, she lets her emotions out really quickly. Um. Give your character a backstory. So, like, come up with something that happened to them that kind of ties to how they act in the story, or, like, ties to the story in a way. So let's say you're making a mystery. Um, okay. 
So let's say you're making a mystery, and your main character's friend got, like, murdered or something. And so, and then, like, create a backstory where, um, someone almost killed her, but her parents got in the way, and these people got arrested. And so that kind of ties to a whole new story where, basically, um, the killers are most likely the people that tried to kill her and stuff, and hurt her parents, and here's some sketches of, uh, and based off of this one. These are pen sketches, by the way. Um, anyways. So, like, yeah, like, that, that, that can be a part of the story, and that can be a backstory. Her backstory is very, um, sad, and it's kind of what ties her to this bad boy, is, um, that her brother and her, um, mom were killed by her dad and she had to witness it herself and had to see it all and so that kind of leads to how her personality is how she's always trying to be like really tough and brave all the time and stuff like that and why she really cares about people and why her emotions show through very easily that kind of you know that ties to why she acts the way that she does so it's just have just have a backstory that ties into how your character acts or what happens in the story. Um, next is, if your character is something, make it obvious. That doesn't really make sense, does it? So basically I'm saying, if your character is a vampire, she, she's not, she's, she's a normal human being, okay? <laughs> for, instance, for example, let's say Edward, okay? So you know, Edward in Twilight, it's pretty obvious that he's a vampire because he's really pale and Bella makes, like, all these things about how, oh, he's super cool, he drives really fast, he was able to save me really quickly, even though he was all the way across the room that he was a vampire. So, make it, like, obvious. So, like, if, like, someone's a ghost, make them, like, extremely pale and make it to where, like, people walk through them and, like, they're like, why can't people see me? Make it like that. Or something like that. Or, um, I have a, I have a character, her, her name is Layla, and Turning off is she's a vampire because she's really pale, and, um, what, she's really pale and, and then she has fangs. <laughs> and so, just, just make it obvious what they are. She's a human. I think we can all tell that she's a human. Um, <laughs> because, well, she's really pale, but, but she is a human. Um, what's the character story? Okay. So, I just, I... I think I already said this, did I not? Maybe not. If, if I did it, if I did, then my apologies. So what's the character story? And I already told you about her story, so. It's a love story. She falls in love with a, with a bad boy and stuff, and she starts to act like him. And she's like, I don't know what to say. She's like, well, she becomes his girlfriend pretty quickly and stuff like that. And her attitude and personality, she begins to start to act like him from being around him so long. And people are like, what's happened to you, Nita? You started acting strange. You don't act the same way that you used to before. And so, just, what, what's the story? Like, make it like a love story, like I said. You can always do a good mystery or, like, um, fantasy. Like, I have a character who's, who's like a dragon. Um, dragon rider. I've always wanted to be one of those. I've always wanted a pet dragon. And so, just... their goal in their story and that well see it's really have a goal in their story. I already told you about that. How it's really just a love story and stuff like that. There's not really anything that she's really trying to accomplish. Um if your character has an accent or uses a certain slang or talks a certain way, right write it or like if so like how does this person sound talk the way that your character talks. So, she's from New Jersey, right? So she has a bit of a Jersey accent. I don't, I know I'm going to get hate about how that's stereotyping, but it's true. Some people do actually have a New Jersey accent, or like a New York accent. There are people out there who actually have it. And so, she's one of the few, many people that has this accent, but... Like, and I use it in writing, and, it, and like, I don't finish things that have, that it was like, I and G, I don't add the G in there, and stuff like that, and that's also just slang for how they used to talk back in the 50s. So, 
Yeah, but her boyfriend, whose name's Casey, I'm gonna have to, like, show you a picture of these two in the end, but, um, but, like, um, he, he has a very, um, his accent is very prominent, like, it's pretty obvious, like, I'm from New Jersey, from, like, New, New Jersey, New York, this kind of area, and it's pretty obvious in how he talks, and so, I write it to the same way I do with her, where I don't end it with I and T, I just end it with I N. And like, you know, like a, is it a cold and apostrophe? Oh no, I think I, I definitely need to go back to school. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, yeah. Okay, and another, I think this is going to be my last piece of advice is use references over the smack the camera. <laughs> Okay, and like my last, my last piece of advice is use references, pictures, and do research. Okay, so what do I mean by this? So they live in New Jersey. I I don't. <laughs> um, and so if they use uh, use if they live in New Jersey, then I have to look up cities in New Jersey and like how far it takes to get from this place to the other. I look up stuff like that and go into very deep story to make it as real as possible and so like do research about this place like what are some cool sites what are some places that exist there where can they go visit and stuff like that look up stuff like that and see and like you can go very deep into detail and make it um i don't know make it to where like it's obvious that this person lives here and like people that read the story that might be from there they could be like oh yes i've seen this place and stuff like that so do research on the place and i definitely do a lot of research when writing this story on new jersey that way i can get it to where this place is actually believable and it sounds like the actual place um well no my i might need to sharpen my coloring pencil but it takes forever so well i'm done with this skin anyway so <laughs> Um, my thing is, uh, oh, and do research, okay, I'm going to tell you about the research thing. So, research, the thing about research, also, I wasn't born in the 50s, <laughs> so, I had to look up research, like, 50s slang, how they talk, how do people dress, and I looked at pictures of, like, how girls dress in the 50s, and this outfit is actually 50s inspired, um, I'm gonna... Pull it up real fast, okay? I, I looked up 1950s fashion, and, and here's stuff that's close to this outfit right here, and you see, like, how they're all dressed and everything, um, and, like, and just, you just scroll through images and stuff like this, and you'll be able to see how people dress, and, like, this is literally what it's based off of, is this right here. My camera is not really, it's not really focused whatsoever. But, um, I, I just scrolled through the internet and looked for this type of stuff, and that's, that's how you, you know, that's just how you, um, come up with these outfits. I, I looked, I looked them up on the, on the internet. When it comes to the same, I kind of looked at the research outfits and stuff, and I wouldn't use internet. <laughs> um, use Google, don't, don't be afraid to look stuff up. You need to do that. Um, and also, like, with the do research, I looked up um, 50 slang. I've done that before. I typed in 50 slang, and I, you know, I was able to see, oh, what are some things that they used to say back then, you know? Or, like, what, like or is there another way to say this, how they would say it nowadays? Is, is, is there another way how they would say this in the 50s? And, like, my example of that is ragtop. Ragtop stands for convertible, but that's what they used to say back then. Instead of this car, like a convertible Mustang, or, like, or slug bug. I'm listing off cars that I wish I owned. But, um, you see what I mean? Like, just, just look up stuff like that and do research. Um, but, yeah, like... Just, just do all of this and everything, and I'm, I think I'll show some pictures of some of my characters. Well, I don't know, not all of them. Not 
I'll definitely show you some pictures, some other drawings and sketches I have of Miss Nita here, because she's like the star of this video right now, and she's one of my favorite characters that I think I've ever created, and definitely the one I've ever put the most thought into. Some of my characters didn't really have backstories, I just draw them because um, I like how they look, and I, I find it fun to draw them. But she has actually got a backstory, and a story in general, that I really love, and stuff like that. Um, I'm just gonna like finish this part when I say finish this, so then you get the coloring pencil at the crossroad room to the coloring pencil. Okay, I got my coloring pencil. So yeah, she has brown eyes. And I usually try and give my characters names that um, that actually don't exist. Like, don't name someone after a famous person. So, like, I'm gonna, like, sign this off. So, her name is Nita. It's like her. Once well, she got married, then her last name changed. <laughs> and I'm just gonna sign this off. And what's today? Today is, like, August something other. August, I can't read this. Uh, 12. Okay. <laughs> August 12th. And so, yeah, that was, that was it. That was basically, um, my tips and, and tricks, and th those were basically my tips to creating original characters or OCs or whatever you 